All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at attaching the fingers to the hand. Uh, I'm going to start off one finger at a time. And my suggestion, as I said in the last video, is actually come in and look at this from the inside of the hand. I'm going to delete out these three faces. And you're going to be able to see where these can attach. Now, you'll notice, if I look one at a time here, that I haven't actually created sections along the palm of the hand yet to attach the top of the fingers. So I'm also going to come in after I've deleted those out with the split polygon tool and just cut one additional edge at the top and uh, maybe one additional edge at the bottom. I can select these edges and move them upwards if I need to. And to connect this up, I recommend using the Append Polygon tool, which you can find under Edit Mesh, Append Polygon tool. So I'll choose that, and that will turn my cursor into a crosshairs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of the far edges on the finger, and then I'll click on the corresponding edge that I want to join this to on the hand. And when I'm done, I'll hit Enter. Now note, this process won't work if you haven't already combined your meshes. You have to make sure the meshes are combined before you can start working joining together components. So I'll go to Edit Mesh and again choose a pen polygon tool. And now I'm going to click across the face next to it and then click to the joining face. This time though, instead of hitting Enter, I'm going to hit Y on the keyboard, which does two things for me. It completes the operation just like hitting enter does and it brings back the tool ready to use again. So I can just click across, create my connection and hit Y, click to connect, hit Y again and you start to get in the habit after that and we can sew up this entire finger. And with a little bit more work, we're there. So I'll come in, choose Normals, soften my edge, and we've got a connection. We're going to skip ahead here in just a second to all these fingers being connected. So you'll see that with a little bit more work, we'll have this whole thing sewn up. It's just kind of boring to watch all those fingers being sewn on. So I've got a lot of history that's piled up from connecting all those fingers, uh, and I've just softened my normals at the very end. So let's come in and do edit, delete all my type history to remove out those history operations. Well, now I've got a problem, and that problem is that each of these fingers going back has created end gons along the hand. But there's a solution. If I can draw these backwards, I can actually use these to annihilate each other. Now, along the top of the hand, depending on what I want to actually do, I could continue drawing these lines back to help define the ridges of the carpal bones for the hand. However, I like to actually stop them here just to keep my polygon count low. And I'm going to do that by using the split polygon tool. It says click to drag on your first edge. And again, I have my little asteroid shaped cursor here. I'm going to click on this first edge right here and just drag it till that little dot locks onto this point. And then I'm going to click on this edge, creating a triangle. And I'll just choose where to position it. And then I'll connect it to the next section of the hand. Now doing this has created still two end gons and two triangles here. But we'll look at resolving that in a second. If I come in and do this on both of my sections here, you'll see that I've actually taken these lines, however, and eliminated them so they flow right into each other and not continue back across the hand. The remaining problem is, however, I still have end gons and triangles, which usually you want to get rid of on your models. If I take this split polygon tool and I cut this triangle in half, 
essentially now giving it four edges, I can take this line and draw it all the way back to the far corner. When I hit enter, take a look at the construction that we now have. If I take this point and I round it out, what we have are three quads. And we've actually transitioned levels of detail. Here I have two faces. Here I've gone up to three, but one beyond it, and I'm back down to one. And I've annihilated all this detail without having it flow further backwards onto the hand. Let's do this again. I'll click in the center of the triangle to cut this up, draw out my edge till it locks to the far corner, and hit enter. Enter the vertex component mode by right-clicking and choosing vertex. Grab the move tool and just pull that vertice back. I'll do it very quickly on these other two and then we'll examine the bottom side. Again, enter vertex component mode, move these back, and we're there. You'll probably want to also come back in and soften your edges. Well, let's look at the bottom side. And I'm also going to go and turn off my grid so that we can see this a little bit better. You also see my thumb still hanging out up here. Well, on the bottom of the hand, to be quite honest, um, I'm not sure I want these to go as far back as we did on the top of the hand. Mostly because we're going to attach the thumb in this area, and I don't want this to get in the way. Secondly, because underneath each of your fingers, you have a little pad right at the base. And I actually think it's going to be best now if we take our edges all four of these edges and delete them. However, don't just hit backspace or delete. If you do, you'll notice in the vertex component mode there'll still be a vertice remaining. Instead, I recommend that you go to Edit Mesh and choose Delete Edges and Vertices, the Delete Edge slash Vertex button, and that will remove those out entirely. Now we can do the same connection that we looked at before drawing out these triangles, but they're one step up. If I cut these in half and draw out my lines to the corner, I'll have a rather completed form. The key here, though, is I like to take the center vertex and move it pretty much into the center of the old face and push it upwards just a little bit, which creates a little bit of a contour change that helps help that helps to define that little pad just slightly. Again, I'll go to Normals, Soften Edge, and then Edit, Delete All by Type History, and we've got a hand with four of the fingers attached. Well, let's look at the thumb real quick. We're going to bring the thumb down into play. One of the things about the thumb, though, is that the first sort of joint is entirely within the hand. So this whole first section, we can pretty much lop off. The back two rows of faces, I say, let's just select them and delete them. You can even, if you're trying to save polygon count, take away the third one as well. Let's reposition my pivot point by hitting insert, moving it closer to the thumb. And now all I'm going to do is take this, move it closer to the hand, rotate it, and position it underneath just where you'd find your thumb. And you really want to make sure this is right underneath the hand in that natural sort of resting position. And we will scale it out and widen it out a little bit as well. We can even take the back row of vertices, scale those out further, hit E for the rotate tool, and bring these up right into a section where they make sense. In the next video, we're going to look at attaching the thumb.